Hi, I'm Leslie Kel Villarreal, and today I have the pleasure of doing a video for you for a nice new vendor that I've come across. She's a great gal. Her name is Sandra Searles. Uh, she has some great items on her website, such as a brand new 32-ton hydraulic jewelry press, which is at a great price. She makes some really fun pancake dyes. Sandra also makes silhouette dyes and containment cup sets to make the pressing super easy. So Sandra also makes aluminum spacers for your hydraulic press and a lot of other tools on her website as well. And today I'm going to be talking about her 2-inch containment set. Uh, I recently asked uh, Sandra to uh, make a silhouette die for my poison ring class and it's just an oval shape but it's one that we use a lot um, to make this beautiful poison ring. And it's the dome part of the ring. And for that you need a silhouette die. And her containment system here that she has is just great and it really helps you to get a nice puffy dome uh, so that you don't have to do a lot of pressings and a lot of annealings. As a matter of fact, I just did one and that was it. Popped it right out and I got about a three millimeter dome on that little piece for my ring. So that's what I'm gonna teach you today. I'm just gonna teach you how to use this little containment kit to, to make a really nice uh, silhouette pressing. Okay, so let me show you how I do it. The next thing I should uh, mention is that anytime I get a die, even if it's a, an acrylic die, um, but especially with a steel die, and even with impression dies, I go over them with a um, pumice wheel. Um, you can also use a file, but the edges can be really, really sharp, especially if you have something that has points on it. So what I do is I go over the edges with a uh, pumice wheel, and I make sure that I've smoothed the top down a little bit. And you should decide which side, if it's not marked, whatever die you get, and it has no markings on the front, you might just wanna mark which side that you use as the front, and that's the side you would file down. If you wanna file down both sides, then it really doesn't matter. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. All right, so this is a pumice wheel. You can buy different grits. Um, you would wanna use one that's probably medium for this. Um, you could use one that's coarse as well. Um, and of course you're gonna put it into your flex shaft. You could also use a Timo tip if any of you use those. Um, they're, I, they're on my class supply list for a lot of my tools. They're a rubber tip and they look like this, but they're nice because they're cylinder shaped. Anyway, so what you do is you, you just wanna kind of go over those edges a little bit. And I should mention that this die is marked. It's got a, a style number, it says S25-2 on the front. So I know that this is the front of my wheel. So. I just go over these sides and take off that rough edge. And it just takes a few minutes. It doesn't take long at all. Um, but anytime if you're using an impression die and it's cutting, meaning it's tearing without coming out with a full piece, uh, then you probably just have some sharp edges. So I just go over them all and make sure that I take them down so that they're nice and soft. Okay, and that's really all there is to it. All right, so let's go back over to the hydraulic press and do our pressing. Okay, so here I have my die and I'm ready to press it. I just wanted to talk to you uh, uh, just for a brief second on shapes. So if you wanted to do a piece of, you know, maybe you've got some gold or you've got some silver that's more expensive than copper and you don't wanna do a big disc because you don't wanna waste metal, it's okay. You can simply leave, my recommendation is to leave at least 10 millimeters of space around your pressing, around your metal before you press it. Because the metal will shrink, um, pull in, and it will push out. And so it's going to take away about half of the space that, you know, if I leave 10 millimeters, I'll probably be left, I think here I'm left with about five and a half millimeters on each side. Because what it did is it took that metal and pushed it out. So you can see the impression in the back is nice and deep. And it used that metal because it drew it together and pushed it up into the, into the opening, okay? So you need to make sure you leave adequate space around. So if you're going to just use something like that, I recommend at least 10 millimeters or more around your piece before you form it. Also, I would recommend you maybe just stick a little piece of tape on the top um, if you're going to be using a smaller piece than what the size of the circle is. All right, here I'm just gonna use a piece of copper because this is not an expensive metal. And this is uh, 54 millimeters thick and it's been annealed. I've taken this little piece of two inch, it was a two inch square, and I just basically cut the corners off 
so that I could drop it down inside of my silhouette die. So here I have my die, <clears throat> and I've marked the front so it's easy to see, and here's my containment cup. And all I'm going to do is take the pieces out, there's my 95 uh, urethane, 95 durometer. First thing that goes in is your die. You're just going to make a, a, a sandwich here of materials. So you've got your die in there, and she's got a nice little hole in the bottom so that you can actually see without removing um, everything out of here whether or not your die, your die ripped or, or if it's deep enough for you. And I think that's a really smart um, smart thing to do. I have another old pusher and it doesn't have that. It's just solid on the bottom. So this one's really nice. Anyway, so you take your metal. You've got your die. The metal goes in next. And if I'm using a big disc like this, I don't have to tape it down because it'll get a good impression from anywhere, okay? Next thing I'll do is I'll put in my urethane and then I'll put in Sandra's pusher, okay? So that is the steps. And these are aluminum uh, pushers, containment set cups. So here is my press and I am using a uh, Bonnie Dune Electric. Um, <clears throat> but like I said, Sandra does sell her own press so you can definitely look into that and they're very affordable. Now, when I press, I don't want to go too much. So if I press until it, I hear a or a snap, that means I've done this. So this is an example of a split seam where it was overpressed, and you don't want to do that. Okay, so let me show you how easy this is. And that's really it. That's all you need. And what's really nice about this is now I can look in the bottom without even taking the die out. I'll show you and see if I like where I ended up. So you see, I can look right there and see that I've got a really nice pressing. And if I didn't, I could go back and, and press it again. Now, if I take this apart and I look at it, and I still want to put it back in the die and press it again, it's very easy to do. Um, but here I got a great impression that's probably close to about three millimeters deep. Um, and that's pretty easy to get with uh, a steel a steel die inside of a containment uh, kit, okay? All right. Okay, so that is it. Um, that's how you make uh, a little silhouette print or pressing. And um, now we are ready to <clears throat> use these in a beautiful piece of jewelry, such as my poison ring class. With a little surprise inside. <laughs> All right, so if you're interested in my classes, you can check me out at lesliekalevillareal.com. Maybe you'd like to sign up for a class and learn to make something fun. Um, but please do go to sandrasterils.com and check out her little containment set with her silhouette pieces and pusher because they are really a foolproof way to make multiples and to make um, nice impressions with your silhouette container. All right, thanks for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, you can leave them in the uh, comment section below. And I'll get back to you, thanks. And keep on making pretty things, people.